something she had never experienced before. The fact that he wasn't alone sent a feeling of resentment down her body. She was shocked at her feelings and with all her willpower dragged her eyes from him. She tried to remember what Ken had asked but found her brain wasn't finished with the man if he tables away with an elegant woman by his side. Don't you ever think of marriage? Ken asked again. Of course I think about marriage, she answered dreamily. The image that readily came to her mind was that of the man a few tables away. Mad at herself and her imagination, she tore her eyes from the man and concentrated on her partner. Well, I'm happy to hear that, Ken said, smiling. Ma wondered if he was going to ask her to marry him. Marriage is important, especially for a girl as successful as you are. You need a man to keep you grounded. Ma laughed quietly, but inside she was fuming with anger. I don't believe I will ever need a husband on those terms. On what terms would you need a husband? He asked seriously. Love, she answered. You know I love you, Umma. Surely you must know that by now, Kent said quietly. Umma made the mistake of glancing at the man a few tables away. She felt her nerves jump in anticipation. He was so very handsome and showed off an aura of self-confidence and wealth. Plus, there was this roguish thing about him that added her already interested heart. Suddenly, the man looked back at her and held her gaze. And in that earth-shattering moment, as she gazed into the whirlpool that was his dark eyes, she let go, even though she wasn't aware of it yet. Uche couldn't believe the first wave of resentment that he felt when he saw her yet with another man. It looked like a special occasion for them. Who was this particular one? He asked silently. He had already concluded that the man in her office might be the one in her life. This proved he was not. He couldn't tell how that made him feel. As he held her gaze, he knew he had attracted her attention for the first time. And she couldn't look away from him. He smiled at the thought. Her unusual eyes sparkled, and he wanted nothing more than to feast on those luscious lips of hers. Lust, he thought, was as powerful as love. But if it was just lust, why did he feel like shooting every other man he had seen her with, especially the bookworm sitting with her? If he was going to have her, he was not going to share her with any other man till he was tired of her. You are not listening to me, Angela said, cutting into his thoughts. He took one last look at Uma and turned to Angela. I am sorry, what were you saying? What will you have? She asked, gesturing at the waiter. Uche turned to the waiter. Uma couldn't believe she could only stop looking at him when he broke off the connection they had just shared. Who was this man? And why did he have such an explosive effect on her? What was wrong with her? When did she become such a giddy teenager getting a man's full attention for the first time? She fumed. He must think she was one of those girls, lusting after him when she was with another man. Your mind is preoccupied, or don't you believe I love you? Ken asked. I know you love me, she answered and crossed her mind for not concentrating. Now she had gone and given Ken the opening he needed to pop the question. Then marry me, Emma, he said. What else do we need to talk about? He asked, smiling. Ma was so furious at his ignorance that she gave him a hard stare. What about how I feel? She asked coldly. I know about your feelings and I'm all right with it, he answered. Speechless, Ma stared at him. She didn't know how to put into words what she wanted to tell him. To add to her shock, he brought out a ring and grabbed her left hand. Mma resisted and was about to take her hand back when she looked at the handsome stranger. She saw his face harden. It was as if he was angry at what was going on at their table. She wondered if he felt the chance to brand her his was being taken away from him. That angered her even more, and she wondered what made him think she could be branded. Uche frowned. He knew this was a special occasion, but it was even more than he expected. The bastard was asking her to marry him. Was this guy right in the head at all? He couldn't believe how furious he was. There was no way he was going to let her marry another man, not when he had just found her. With growing anger, he watched what was happening at their table. Angela caught into his thoughts again. Is she someone I know? She asked. Who? The girl you are taking to the party. Oh, the girl. I very much doubt you do, he answered. Are you sleeping with her? Not yet. 
but we are going to this night possibly. Angela, it's not proper to discuss this with you. I was eight when I fell in love with you and I have stayed in love with you all this while and you tell me what's proper? Stop it. You are sounding like a martyr. You know very well we were never that serious. I am not your friend or your sister. You have never kissed me like a brother. It is something else. And I refuse to believe it's another girl. Or are you trying to tell me that all those stuff written by the tabloids are lies and are you deliberately trying to annoy me? All right, Uchi. You might not know it now, but I'm the only one for you. And I know that when this fancy passes, you would come back to me. Uchi wasn't paying attention. His attention was on the other table where the limbless bastard was still trying to persuade the girl to say yes to his proposal. He began to frown again. Mama could feel the man's gaze on their table, and she wondered what was going through his mind, but she didn't have time to dwell on that because the next minute, Ken was again demanding her full attention. Come on, Mama. You know you will never regret marrying me, Ken said, bringing her back to earth. I'm sorry, Ken. You see... Um, you said you know my feelings and that you are all right with them, but my feelings matter a lot to me. I don't feel the way you do, so I can't marry you, explained Ma assertively. What is it exactly you don't feel for me, Ken asked. I don't love you, Ken. I can't marry a man I don't love. I would only end up torturing him and myself. You love me, Ma, only you have not realized it. It took me some time to realize that what I was feeling for you was love and that I want to spend the rest of my life with you, Kent said cleverly. You don't understand. I don't love you now and I don't... All right, Kent said, cutting her off. Why don't you take time to think about it? You don't have to answer me now, he told her. Mama was going to protest again, but she made the mistake of looking at the formidable man and his disapproving gaze. Probably, if she gave out the impression that she was not available, the man would leave her alone. A niggling thought in her mind told her that the man couldn't leave her alone because he had not said a word to her before. It was all in her head. She mused silently. And if you come to the decision to marry me, just wear it. You don't have to say anything. But if not, give it back and I won't have to repeat this embarrassment again, Kent said hurtfully. Mama accepted it, seeing it as an opportunity not to explain her actions when she gave it back to him. Shortly they stood up to leave. She walked with her head held high, willing herself not to look at him. Uto watched her leave with growing annoyance. How could she accept the ring? He was going to have his fill of her first, and he wasn't going to share till his loss is sated. Back at work, she went straight into her studio. She walked relentlessly trying to get one strange man out of her mind. This man doesn't mean anything to me, she willed herself to say. But each time her thoughts carried her mind to his partner, she felt a jolt of resentment. Taking a deep breath, she found a shopping bag and stuffed the dress she was working on inside it. Removing the hairband she had used in holding her hair together while she walked, and in jerky frustrating movements, she started towards the door. As she got to the ground floor, she decided to go and see Phyllis to cool off. She opened Phyllis's door and found him not alone but with his wife. Mama, I was just asking about you, his wife said jovially. Mama smiled at Phyllis's wife. She liked Tessie very much. It was very easy to love a woman as guileless as Tessie. Oh, she was out with that no good banker. Phyllis murmured his disapproval. Come on, Phyllis. Let the girl enjoy herself. She deserves it. That no good banker asked me to marry him, she told them. I hope you said no, because it's not right for you, Phyllis asked seriously. Don't mind Phyllis there. If you love the guy, go for him, Tessie said dearly. Anyway, I didn't say yes, and I didn't say no either. I agreed to think about it, and he insisted I kept his ring. What is there to think about? You don't love him, so you can't marry him. Phyllis disclosed. Phyllis, Tessie called with warning. You should allow Uma to make up her own mind. I'll see you tomorrow, Phyllis, she announced. You are going home early. Please tell me you are not meeting that limbless banker again, he pleaded jokingly. No, I am not. 
I am going to meet someone exciting for a change, she announced, winking at Tessie as she started towards the door. She looked up and then stopped abruptly. Standing with his back to her was a tall man in suit, and there was only one man she knew who looked like his suits were heavily made for his body, she thought in anticipation. As if on cue, the man turned. Uma was taken aback and somehow transfixed on the spot. The man walked up to her smiling. Hello, but I need your help, he announced in deep baritone voice. Like a gift from above